In this video, we are going to make the connection between linear transformations and matrices. As long as the linear transformation is from some finite dimensional space to another finite dimensional space, we can always find a matrix that will do the same job as the transformation. Let me show you this to you with an example. This transformation here projects every point in R2 to the x-axis. We can find a matrix that does the exact same thing. Another example could be the reflection of a point about the line x equal to y. The matrix that does this job is this one. We will learn how to find these matrices in a bit, but the point I want to make right now is that one of the reasons why matrix vector multiplication is defined the way it is, is because we want matrices to be used for transformations. But sadly, matrices cannot do everything. We all have our weaknesses. Even Superman is not so super before a kryptonite. Matrices cannot move the origin. The zero vector will always give a zero vector when multiplied by a matrix. Also, matrix vector multiplication follows these simple rules. But we purposely made a special subtype of transformation called linear transformations that ensure that matrices work and can be used to represent a transformation. From the previous video, we know that in order to define a transformation completely, all we need to know is where the transformation would take the basis vectors. And then if I want to know the transformation of some vector x, I write it as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And then by using the linearity of transformation, break it down in the simple form. Now using the already defined value of t, we can find the exact value. If you look at this expression closely, you could say that we are taking some linear combination of the basis vectors. And by definition, this can be written as a matrix vector product. But this matrix is, in a way, defining the transformation. Wo matrix, jo transformation wala same kaam karega, is just the matrix, jiske columns are the transformations of the basis vectors. Let me show you how this works for a 90 degree rotation transformation given by this function. Our job is to find the elements of this matrix A, which would take the same vector xy to minus yx. We start by defining the basis for the input and output spaces. Then we look at where the function takes the first basis vector. So I want the product of this matrix and 1, 0 to produce 0, 1. Now I perform the matrix vector multiplication and I find that the vector AC is equal to 0, 1, which implies that A is 0 and C is 1. Next, we input the other basis vector in the function. And now we want the matrix multiplied to this vector 0, 1 and produce the same output minus 1, 0. Performing the matrix vector multiplication, we find this vector BD should be equal to minus 1, 0, which gives us B is equal to minus 1 and D is equal to 0. Putting all the elements together, we have found the matrix A. But now take a closer look at the columns of this matrix. The first column is where I had landed and the second column is where J had landed after the transformation. This proves that the columns of the matrices are just the transformed basis vectors. Here's a question I would like you to try. Pause the video and see if you can solve it. Notice that this time we won't get a square matrix because the dimensions of the input and output spaces are different. Since we are going to take the product of this matrix with a two by one vector, our matrix must have two columns. And since the output that we would obtain is going to be a three by one vector, the individual columns must have three elements. So we should get a three by two matrix. We will take the standard basis for both R2 and R3. Then we calculate where each of the standard bases would go. And then the matrix would just contain these two vectors. But what if I'm told the transformation of some other vectors instead of the transformation of the standard basis vectors and then asked to find the associated matrix? Well, if the given vectors are linearly independent, we can write each basis vector as a linear combination of the given vectors. Then finding the transformation of each basis vector is easy using the linearity principle. And then using these TEs as the column vectors, we can write the associated matrix. Now I want to go the other way. I want to start with a matrix and find the associated linear transformation. You might be given a matrix like this and asked to find out what the function would look like. This is easy. You just take any arbitrary input vector x, y and carry out the matrix vector multiplication to reach the output. Then you can easily write the definition of the function. Let me use the matrix from the previous example. I multiply it by a two-dimensional vector and find the output. 
Now it's just a matter of writing it down in a different way. Let's talk about the image of transformations using matrices. A transformation takes a vector from the input space to the output space. The set consisting of the transformation of all the input vectors is called the image of the transformation. In matrix language, every input vector x is taken to the output vector ax. As an example, let me take this rotation matrix and you multiply it with an input vector. Now for all the input space, that is for all the vectors x, y and r2, this expression is all of the linear combinations of the vectors 0, 1 and minus 1, 0. Or in other words, it is the span of these vectors. Or in yet other words, this is the column space of the given matrix. Exactly what is the column space will be taught in the future videos. Although I'm sure you can already guess this. Now it's time to look at matrix matrix multiplication. A matrix in itself can be thought of a transformation, something that moves vectors from one space to another. But now if I take another matrix B and I pre-multiply this to the matrix A, what does this mean? To make sense of this, let me introduce a 2D vector on both sides. Let's first look at these two terms. This is essentially taking a vector x and transforming it to A times x. So this here is a vector which we reached by transforming the original vector. Algebraically, we can calculate it and find that it is equal to minus y x. Now we transform this vector minus y x by using the matrix B and the algebraic calculation gives minus y0 as the final output vector. Graphically, we started with the vector in R2. This got rotated by the matrix A and the resulting vector got projected on the x-axis by the matrix B. So B times A can be thought of first rotating a vector using A and then projecting it using B. Matrix matrix multiplication is defined such that the product BA is equal to a new matrix C that does the two-step transformation in one go. The input vector x directly goes to the final vector BAx. Now looking at matrix multiplication in this way helps us reach the conclusion that generally B times A won't be equal to A times B. Rotating and then projecting is not the same thing as projecting and then rotating. If we were to calculate ABx in the way we just did BAx, we would find that these two quantities are clearly not equal. Always remember this critical result. Matrix matrix multiplication is in general not commutative. Now let's talk about the order of the matrices in MMM. Let me ask you this. For a given matrix A, a 3 by 2 matrix, what matrices can I pre-multiply to this? I need to find the order of this matrix B here. Now AX would represent a 3 by 1 vector. And if I have to multiply a matrix with a 3D vector, that matrix must have 3 columns. The number of rows can be anything, say P for this example. Now what will be the order of the equivalent matrix C? It turns out to be P cross 2. The P is here because the final vector is going to be a P cross 1 vector. And the 2 is here because the input vector is 2D. Now let's look at the mechanism of carrying out the MMM given two simple matrices. Again, we introduce a dummy vector to figure this out. First, we take the product of the matrix A and vector X. And then we take the product of the matrix B with this resulting 2 by 1 vector. Now here's the trick. We split this 2 by 1 vector as a product of a matrix and a vector. Comparing this to BAX, we can conclude that this green thing here is a 2 by 2 matrix, which is indeed B times A. I just showed you how to interpret the product of two matrices, but this is not the most efficient way of carrying out the multiplication. There are three ways to do this quickly. You can take the first row of B and take its inner product with the first column of A. This will give you the first element of the equivalent matrix. Next, take the first row of B and the second column of A to reach to the second element of the equivalent matrix and so on and so forth. But I find the other way a bit more interesting. So let's talk about that. Take the entire matrix B and multiply it with the first column of A. Similarly, take the entire matrix B again and multiply it with the second column of B. The first product here is nothing but the first column of the equivalent matrix. And the second product is nothing but the second column of the equivalent matrix. So each column of the equivalent matrix can be thought of as a matrix vector product in itself. Apart from this column picture, there is a row picture as well. The third way of looking at matrix matrix multiplication. 
but I think for now this is more than enough. Now let's calculate this for a previous example of a projection matrix and a rotation matrix. Think about the first column as the multiplication of the entire matrix B with the first column of A and the second column as the product of the entire matrix B and the second column of A. We can simplify this 2 by 2 matrix to this neat looking matrix C. Now I know this video and the previous two videos have been too intense and I've thrown at you a lot of new stuff here but there's a way to absorb all of this. You just need to put in a little bit of effort in solving the questions I've posted in the description below. As a student, it's very tempting to binge watch the entire series and feel like you've completed the subject. But this is not a Netflix series. You have to work hard so that these things stick in your mind. So I hope that you'll do these questions and I'll see you in the next video.